Over five years ago, I decided to take a chance on the Fox 2.0 suspension setup for the 4Runner. At the time, there wasn't much info out there about it. It was uh, a few forum posts, like from FJ Cruiser owners and F-150 guys, but there wasn't anything specifically about the 4Runners out there. Since then, they've become a lot more popular, and in this video, I'm going to share my experience with them, including how they're holding up, and one major flaw that is annoying the crap out of me. So a little background, I've owned the Fox 2.0 coilovers on this thing for five years, a little bit over five years. I also drove it with the stock suspension for a little bit when I first got it, and also my Tacoma has stock suspension on it still as well. So I have that kind of to compare to. Now when I was shopping back then, I was kind of up in the air. I, I was thinking about just doing Bill Stein 5100s, that's what I had on my old Grand Cherokee. I looked at the more expensive Fox setups, the Kings, the Icons, I even briefly considered retrofitting TRD Pro suspension, because at the time there was a few guys on the forums that were talking about doing that. Now, I don't want to toot my own farts or anything, but at the time there wasn't really anybody talking about the Fox 2.0 setup. To be honest, I don't think anybody even really knew that it was available for the 4Runner. So let's talk about the installation of these. And I had a buddy of mine that was a Toyota tech at the time install them for me. Unfortunately, we didn't document any of it because this was before the Canadian Gearhead brand was even started and I wasn't really interested in creating content for anything. But from what I remember, the install went pretty smoothly. There was no real hiccups. It was no different than any other coilover swap on one of these Toyota trucks. One issue we did have was there was a bit of a creaking or a popping sound coming from one of them. And uh, we, we took a stethoscope to it and we found that it was just the little bushing on the shaft was, I think the tolerance was just a little bit too tight and we sprayed it with some penetrating oil and it hasn't made any sound ever since and it's been over five years later so i think we're good to go there on-road driving well the streets in my city suck for some reason they think it's a smart idea to patch things like 200 times before they ever actually like repave a section of a road so it's like a war zone out here sometimes. It's not quite like on New York levels, but these streets in my city are pretty bad. But compared to the stock suspension, and keep in mind that this 4Runner had the rear air suspension from the factory and the x rius setup, these offer a much smoother ride overall compared to the factory setup. Um, it's stiffer, it's a bit more firm, but it's much more compliant over bumps, like especially large, sharp bumps. The 285 tires obviously help a little bit with that too, with the sidewall, but um, it's very, it's almost confusing because it's smoother, but it's stiffer in terms of body roll, but you don't feel anything in the street anywhere near as much as you do with the stock setup, if that makes sense. They also provide stiffer handling and arguably less body roll than the x rias setup, which was kind of its whole claim to fame. I have never regretted deleting that system from my 4Runner whatsoever. I think this setup actually handles way better in corners. But anyways, I gotta say the ride quality in this thing is fantastic. I mean, I drove it across Canada towing a trailer all the way to the Rocky Mountains and back. It's like 11,000 kilometers. I know I reference it in pretty much every video that I ever make, but it was like the last time I left the house before I had a baby. Anyways, the ride is phenomenal. I have no regrets. I think it matches the Old Man Emu A95 rear springs that I have in this after doing the coil conversion. And uh, yeah, no complaints. If for an all around street and off road setup, the ride quality is fantastic. As far as off road driving goes, admittedly, I haven't really done a whole lot of it. I've spent a lot of time on dirt roads and uh, like higher speed washboard sections and stuff like that. In terms of like rock crawling and hill climbing, I haven't done a whole ton of it. Flex with this system is pretty decent. Now I still have both sway bars connected on mine, so obviously that's gonna be the limiting factor here, but, but no real complaints. I think for an independent front suspension and a solid rear axle setup, uh, it's pretty decent. The valving and the spring rate is a really good match for the 4Runner, and that's because Fox valves these specifically for each individual vehicle that you're mounting to. That's why there's different part numbers for everything. And that's so that you don't end up with shocks that are valved for like a full-size pickup truck that weighs twice as much as a 4Runner like this. Um, and so that's where a lot of your, your ride quality is going to come from. These are tuned specifically for this vehicle. I think I've probably only bottomed them out maybe once or twice, but keep in mind, I tend to be pretty gentle with my vehicle when I'm off-roading. I'm not looking to break anything. I'm not trying to be a hot shot and uh, catch air off stuff. But um, if, I was, if I felt myself bottoming out more often, I wouldn't worry so much about the coilovers. I would be more interested in upgrading my bump stops, I think, at that point. 
All right, so we're back in the garage. Let's go ahead and pull one of the wheels off here and take a look at what the condition of the coilovers are at this point. See how they're holding up. All right, let me show you how these things are holding up. So these have now seen five salty Canadian winters here in Ontario. And also keep in mind that I do get this Forerunner oil sprayed. I try to every winter or so. Um, so that certainly helps with the rust and the, the corrosion and stuff. And I also, I just wiped the, the undercoating off of this real quick so we can get a better look at the actual condition of it. It was not this shiny when I pulled the wheel off. So this gives you an idea of the appearance of these and of course they're not brand new in box looking anymore but overall i think they're holding up pretty darn good we do have some rust on the springs themselves it looks like this the coating on the springs is failing a little bit that's not like a huge surprise especially considering like the rest of this truck obviously like look at this knuckle this is this is life in canada here unfortunately but th so there is a little bit of rust on the springs uh everything else though it looks pretty good Another thing to keep in mind too is that when I first had these installed, I ceramic coated them just to make them a little bit easier to maintain, to keep them clean and stuff. And so like up here, this was all ceramic coated. Now I haven't kept up on this in recent years. Realistically, that coating would only last like a year or two, especially on the undercarriage here. But uh, I only did that the one time. That was about five years ago. So I don't think that's really playing a role here anymore, but this is still pretty easy to wipe off. All the branding, all the like logos and stuff are holding up pretty, pretty nicely on here. Um, there's even a little Fox logo on the spring here. I'm not sure if you can see and that's even still there. So aside from a little bit of rust here, I think appearance wise, the condition is pretty good. I don't see any signs of any leaks anywhere. Again, there's like some crud on here and it, it's hard to um, pinpoint any leaks when you get the entire area sprayed with oil. But um, yeah, the there's nothing really jumping out at me at all. Yeah, so in terms of rust and corrosion, not bad. I mean, of course, like the, the hardware up top is not perfect anymore and and the spring coating has definitely failed a little bit there. But overall, I'd say they're holding up pretty good. So now it's time for my one major complaint with these Fox 2.0 coilovers. It's the adjustability. And that's a big selling point in getting adjustable coilovers like this. And you look at them, and you see they got a threaded body, they got a collar down here and everything. You should be able to adjust these like any other coilover. But the reality is the only way to adjust the ride height is to actually remove the, the coilover, compress the spring, and then you can spin this collar. That's the only way to do it. And if that's the case, when it is, these aren't that much better than adjusting a set of like Bilsteins or something where you have to take them apart and change the, the spring clip on them. So. That was a big bummer for me because I thought I was going to be able to kind of fine tune the ride height and um, it's just not the case. You can see there is a collar here, but regular coilover wrenches that you would use, like say on this car, they won't work on this. They don't have the same pattern. That's because the, the slots on this collar is actually designed to be turned by hand again, because when you're actually adjusting it, there's no pressure on it from the spring. So your wrenches aren't gonna fit on here. That's because you're supposed to, this is your wrench right here, unfortunately. So you have to take all the pressure of the spring off of that collar in order to adjust it. Now I have adjustable coilovers on the MR2 here and I'm not gonna pull the wheel off to show you, but these are a traditional design. They've got the lock rings on them. You grab your coilover wrench, you just jack it up. You adjust the height, whatever you want. You can go up and down, up and down all you want and fine tune it perfectly. The Fox 2.0, not so much. And again, Fox's statement on this is that um, they're protecting the threads on the aluminum body. And so these are, the, the benefit is that these are aluminum, so they're not gonna rust and corrode like a, a steel shock will, but those, those threads are gonna be softer. And so they've done this so that you don't strip the threads off, which I suppose makes sense. So that means that I'm still running these at the factory setting that they came in right out of the box, which it, it gave me about two and a quarter inches of lift, which is kind of a blessing in disguise actually, because, um, as you can see very clearly, I'm still running my factory upper control arms. I still have my completely intact body mount here, despite running 285s. And you can't really see in here, but my CV angles are awesome at this ride height. So 
If they were adjustable, I probably would have been running these closer to three inches of height. And I would be putting more wear and tear on things. I would have had to get upper control arms in order to get this thing aligned properly in order to get the proper caster. And I didn't have to do that stuff. So I guess it's not all bad here. So at this ride height, I do still have a little bit of the factory rake. Unfortunately, when I have the OME 895 springs in the rear, those are a two inch lift spring. And so um, to get rid of that, that rake, I would have had to go up a little bit in the front end or lower in the rear. I could have gone with the 895E rear springs, which are only a one inch lift. But with this rake, it does actually handle a bunch of weight in the rear really well. It tows really well, it rode perfectly level when I, when I hooked a camper trailer up to it. Um, so again, there's kind of pros and cons here. I think personally, I kind of wish I would have adjusted the coilovers up to maybe two and a half inches instead of two and a quarter. Um, it seems like people that have done more than two and a half inches that have raised them up and put a lot more preload on them have said that the ride quality really suffered. So again, despite being adjustable coilovers, you can't really adjust them that much without really affecting the ride quality. In terms of price, despite my complaining about the adjustment here, I think the Fox 2.0 is a pretty good value. I think the, the main competitor or the closest competitor is probably the Bilstein 6112s. And if you're gonna compare that, like a full set of front and rears of, of the Bilsteins to the Fox 2.0 setup, you're gonna be spending about 180 bucks more for the Bilstein setup. And I'm a big fan of the Fox brand. I think they've got a ton of racing history and a lot of engineering that goes into their products. And the fact that these are even a little bit cheaper than a pretty similar competitor, I think is a pretty good value if you ask me. So what's the final verdict? Do I recommend these Fox 2.0 coilovers? Well, yeah, I think unless you're treating your 4Runner like a trophy truck, you're gonna to wanna to spend a lot more money and get a higher end coilover then in that case. This is not gonna turn your, your 4Runner into a, a trophy truck. You, high speed off-roading, jumping, stuff like that, that's not what these are for. But if you're looking for kind of like a budget off-road coilover for your 4Runner, um, you're looking for something that's good for overlanding and stuff like that, more of a weekend warrior, or something that you drive on the street a lot, but you want to be able to take off road on the weekends. I think the Fox 2.0 is a really good setup. It's also really helpful if you live in a place like Canada here where we salt the roads in the winter time. Um, that aluminum body is definitely, as you can see, it's uh, holding up pretty darn well considering what it goes through in terms of corrosion and stuff. But all in all, I would say that these are a huge upgrade over either the factory suspension or like a spacer lift or something like that. It's like night and day difference. It's such a big upgrade. Every time I drive this thing, I'm just like, I still really enjoy the ride quality. I think they really are like the perfect compromise between off-road capability and then on-road ride quality. They're nice and smooth on the streets, but they're tough enough to be able to handle some pretty decent bumps when you're off-roading. I had a set of Bilstein 5100s on my old Jeep Grand Cherokee and this setup is better in like literally every single way. I mean, the way that they're holding up, those things got corroded after like two months of not even winter weather. It was, it was brutal. This ride's way better. It's a much better product. You can get these rebuilt too. And Fox even recommends that you rebuild them. I think every 50,000 miles or something like that, depending on your usage. If you're off-roading them a lot, uh, you gotta get them rebuilt more often. But the fact that you can rebuild them is awesome. It means that Hypothetically, this could be the last set of suspension that you ever buy for your 4Runner. Just keep on rebuilding them over time. I think overall, I'm gonna give the Fox 2.0 an eight out of 10 in kind of all categories. I think I'm annoyed by the adjustability, but the what you get for the price, the way that they hold up, the way that they ride both on the street and off-road on, on washboard, bumps on dirt roads and stuff, and then even just on, on uh, tough pavement. It's hard to beat, man. I mean, for the price of these, I never would have thought I'd get a Fox product. Uh, yeah, I would highly recommend them if, and this is a big if, if your intended usage is the same as mine, which is, it's a daily driver. I want it to be smooth. I got my baby riding in the back. I go off-roading sometimes. It's super capable if I do want to go off-road, but it's also really comfortable on-road. And a lot of the trucks that have like the big Kings and stuff like that, they're not super comfortable. They're actually pretty firm and pretty stiff. So uh, yeah, very happy with the Fox 2.0. Wish I could adjust them easier. Maybe they'll change something on that in the future when they redesign them or something, I don't know. But for now, that's all I got for you guys today. And uh, if you're interested, again, I'll put a link in the description if you wanna check out the price for a pair for you. Uh, keep in mind also, I'm running the 2.0 rear shocks on mine that match as well. So I'm running the full Fox 2.0 system on mine. Later.